friends i figured that after 3 days of running around you must be tired too and uh, i thought we'd do some little grounding sitting down but even before we do that as self regulation in chi healing the first thing we do is to regulate ourselves okay so just get comfortable wherever you are sitting you know down or on your chair and just feel the connection with the earth you can keep your eyes open or closed whatever is convenient for you So I'm just going to cross my hands one hand over the other with the thumbs interlocking This is one of the Buddhist ways it's also in monasteries you know to remind you when your mind is wandering far away So as we have all discovered the mind is capable of traveling traveling far into different galaxies and back but we do want to also keep our mind here and now just a loving the mind to stay with us right now here feeling your feet in connection with the ground relaxing the legs the knees just feel your thighs and your buttocks on the chair and your back as well taking support from the chair feel your sit bones and the spine just relaxing your shoulders neck muscles and feel as if your head is suspended in the air like a chime that is dangling Now notice your breath. And just observe the sensations that you feel in your body. Everything is ephemeral. sensations come and go just welcome it when it comes and allow it to go when it goes
gently open your eyes, keeping this short for want of time. And gently with your fingertips, just jab your, your, your cranium and lead the chi downwards, any blocked energy, leading it sideways and also backwards, leading it down. Just smoothing the cheek. I'm just going to run through a few of the cavity presses. Okay, one of the easy ways of doing, of energizing the body. You don't need to know something so technical like uh, acupuncture or acupressure for that matter. Some simple important cavities is what I thought we could work on as a self-regulation. And um, before that, I wanted to also give some little techniques about um, how you could just sit and, uh, you know, not make a big thing about meditation. To me, it is also every moment, every single moment, if you just enjoy and watch what you're doing and be with the present, that itself is meditation. I had the opportunity to spend a week in Dordogne, France with Thich Nhat Hanh, Thay. And uh, it was such a joy to walk with him in the morning and feel the grass under the feet, the flowers, the little flowers that we were treading on and to notice everything around us and just in that consciousness of being, you know, we spend that one week. And I think it is not just the moment when we spend this half an hour or one hour that we meditate and then, you know, life goes back to chaos. No, if we are aware of every single moment in our life and we cherish and enjoy it to the maximum, I think that is taking the meditation into our lives and practice. It's a simple thing. So one of the techniques um, that um, the Chinese do also for rheumatoid arthritis is, I'm using golf balls here, okay? Or there are metal balls also. This is much more to, to, to draw, to lead the energy out of your system, the metal balls, you know? I also have worked with, with uh, marble and better still is wooden balls. Okay, so th these are simple things where you can just turn them around and work on your fingers. And I've had a lot of people with rheumatoid arthritis who've, who've done qigong and certain exercises that is, they practice at home and have, you know, completely healed themselves. So simple techniques of just using this. This is one, one thing for the fingers and also placing it on the ground, on the earth, and you can just, you know, roll them, use this as a massage for your feet, and you apply as much pressure you want, working on the acupressure points in the feet. You don't even need to know the name on what it is, but yeah. I'll, I'd like to run us from head to toe with simple, simple techniques and, um, you know, feel it for ourselves. So, when, when we are sitting in, in an airport and we have a couple of hours, or even in a bus stand or a train station, you know, we don't have to fret and fume that, you know, oh my God, I'm wasting my time. You can actually sit and do some self-regulation. I mean, whatever you want among these, you can choose and do it for yourselves. Uh, so... I'm not even going to take you through the names simply because what I'm interested in is, you know, so that you would be able to understand. So to come to the by, by way, I'm, I'm calling them names, okay, because uh, force of habit. So it's the crown of the head. Oh, uh, could you connect the screen, please? They can't see. Yeah? So 
the crown of the head. Now, if you go to the top of your ear and just allow your middle finger to connect right on top, it will be somewhere towards the half of your cranium. Okay, the center there is your sahasara, your byway, it's called. So it's a meeting of 100 paths. That's what it translates to in Chinese. So, you know, this is just for your knowledge. We'll come back to this one. Okay, you can gently, gently, softly press there and just give it a little tremor, a little shake there. Using, you can use your two fingers. Okay. And now, what I would like us to do is to go step by step with simple, important cavities. Okay, so um, self-massage is something that we could easily do. If you come to the center, okay, just here where you have, you know, the meeting of the eyebrows. Now, when we, we want to just move the chi in this direction and lead it downwards, okay? So we'll start here. Okay, I'm using my middle finger. By the way, for the Chinese, this is a very good finger, okay? It is the pericardium channel. Okay, so I'm just giving it a little, little press and a shake there. Okay, and from here, I'm just going down to the bridge of the nose, okay, the sides of the eye. Okay, um, it's not in this image, but here. And I'm just circling. And just leading it over my eyes, pressing gently and coming to the sides, the other side of the eyes. Okay, I do that once more. And I take it around and come here. So now, I come back to the bridge of the nose. Pressing down the sides, I just come down to the sides of the nostrils. Okay, you have two cavities here. You'll feel it a little bit here, a little depression. Just shaking this out also. You can. And the Renzong, we're coming, this is just down the bridge of the nose, okay? this down right right in there if you don't have nails you can also just press this is also a point where you can if someone faints you can also revive them just by gently gently pressing and shaking this okay so this is one of it so from here once again now I'm just going over the eyebrows and coming to the temples okay so here gently going downwards circle downwards and from there I come down I have this earpiece on but to the side here again you have a cavity just you'll feel this you have the ear and just in front this soft portion of the ear I might have another image a little below So, so gently also pressing here, and you have this next image which will show you the ermine, these three points that you can see on the screen. Okay, and if you go behind the ear, you have this, this big mound, the mastoid. Just coming down there, there's a depression. Also to ease it out, you can even open your mouth a little. And just, so these are simple things that you could do for the, with the facial complex. Now coming back, we do this once more. We just run through this, the temples. Okay, coming down, going to the sides, ermine and these three cavities, and going around to the back of the ear, and gently stimulating. Now coming to the jaws, okay? So these cavities, 
a lot of times we store stress in the job. Okay, the Jiache. So you have equivalent of these names in in the acupressure books that we have here. And by the way, even this went from India to China. And it's very popular there, the acup acupressure and uh, some of these points, uh, you know, that were learned. I mean, there was an interchange, okay? There are books that say that the we have taken it from the Chinese. It doesn't matter where, okay, where it comes from. The point is that if, if there is something good that we can incorporate into our lives, we can just take it from wherever the source, the source is. So gently also releasing, it has to be soft and gentle, releasing tensions in the jaw. Another thing we could also do is open the mouth and just open and close, gently easing the tension in the jaw. Okay, and just coming around. Yeah. I'm going to ch turn my chair and also show you something at the back of the cranium. So, this region is called the this is the occiput. You have a mound here. Okay, so if you place your middle fingers on that mound, using your index finger, you gently, it's called beating the heavenly drums. Okay, it's all, this, uh, this area down below is called the jade pillow. Okay, so this will also, it's good for awakening the limbic system. Okay, the third eye. So while doing this, you know, you gently with the flick of your index finger, you're gently beating the heavenly drums. Yeah, right at this mound of the occiput. And you, you know, and you're just, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in ancient times in, uh, in China, a lot of the martial artists who lived in remote, especially people who were, who were in monasteries and lived in remote places, they didn't have access to doctors and dentists as today. So a lot of exercises, they learned how to set bones, they learned how to use herbs. So three parts okay, the, uh, of ch uh, TCM or traditional Chinese medicine. The first thing is Qigong, two is using herbs, just like a Ayurveda, you know, local herbs that are used in China to heal. I mean, the plants itself have an, you know, healing quality. So that they do and of course, acupuncture and acupressure. And like I was saying, you can, you can do these simple things, you know, at, by yourselves. Okay, so I'm not going into too many of these things, but another one is, we'll go move on to the Hegu, it's called. Um, I said I won't use the names. Anyway, so you have this, if you open out your index finger and your thumb, and you just allow this thumb or one of your fingers to go right into this web, right down there, and you will feel a little pain. Okay, for the stomach, the facial complex, the face and so on, it releases a lot of tension and pressure. So this is something, and always just keep your elbow down and relax, yeah. And if you can support it, that's even better. And gently, sorry, I'm, 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 yeah, you can use a tip if you don't have nails, you know, you can use your, so right inside there, and I'm just shaking it up, you know. And when this becomes a daily practice, you're allowing releases to happen. You're allowing the blockages to move. It's a simple way of regulating your body. So likewise, the other hand. Both hands, yeah, yeah. It's good too, you feel balanced. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm just running you all through some simple things that you can do. See, nobody even knows if I'm sitting in a bus stand and doing this. You know, I can look around, enjoy, instead of fretting, there's another half an hour to wait for the bus. Okay, then the pericardium channel. So you have the middle finger, you just fold it in, you come to the center of the hand. Okay, these are the lao gong in Chinese. Okay, the pericardium point. So gently again, pressing and energizing this. So the per pericardium is the thin membrane that protects the heart. So gently, you can do, do it six to eight times, whatever counts. Yeah, you can see. Okay, so do I show it this way, this way? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. So, simple things. So then if you go to the base of your hand, three fingers, just place it here. This is called the inner gate. Okay, the center here where you have, where I have my index finger. I go to the center of my hand. I have one hand here, one finger here, and one finger at the back. Okay, inner gate and outer gate. Again, just press for a few moments. Just press and keep it pressed for a few seconds and then when you release there's so much of relief it's and for people who have BP also this is supposed to work wonders yeah I'll show it again so I take this three fingers here from the base of my hand and where my index finger is here I just take it to the center okay and then right behind and gently press And likewise, we do it with the other hand. And gently, inner gate and outer gate. Okay, so at least these little things. So most of the times, most of the people I have come in touch with uh, have been complaining of knee problems and back problems, okay? Uh, for the back, some of the exercises that I have are what we did even yesterday and day before, of moving very gently. Likewise, um, I think more or less for the hands, I don't want to get it too complicated, so I'll just keep it to this. Um, yeah, the, the nape of the neck, you know? So this again. So, so if you go right down to the crown of the head, I missed that out. So if you just slightly tilt your head forward, okay, there's a little depression there. If you can just, you can feel that, right? Just towards the end, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you have the image there. See the point? Yeah, I'll, instead of, yeah, okay what is written as the Feng Fu. Okay, so lead this downwards. So this is the direction you would be going. So you want any stagnant chi to be led downwards, which is why we start from the head and go down. Okay, and just half an inch outwards from that point is what is written there as the Feng Chi. Also, to gently circle it downwards and a little below okay the tianzu and relax see one of the things that i learned also from my um, qigong master is um, he says most of the times when we have neck problems, we tend to push our neck back and so on. Instead, you know, just try to be gentle with it and firstly orient, like now, orient to the room, moving to the left. And once, I've, when, once I go to the point where this is my comfort zone, beyond that it's, it's going to be painful, I just take my gaze behind me, but I don't push too hard. 
and gently I orient to the room. Softly turning my neck left and right. We do that slow once again. And back to the center. And for those of you who were there for the Qigong, we also did the circling, you know, with the mouth open. I'm not repeating that. Um, thereafter, yeah. Some of the things, some of these points, I'm just going through what you could do for self regulation, okay? So you have the deltoid just here in front, you know, just on pressing this point, okay, and just easing the tension. And we do the same thing on the other hand. And coming down towards some of these images, I haven't put it in here. Okay, so just here at the elbow, if you just place your hands, you can bring the image back to me and gently pressing and circling and same thing on the opposite hand I would normally do these before I do the Hegu and the pericardium channel, which we did a while ago. It's, it's better to come from top to down. Now that we have done that, also then working with the kidneys, you know, if you can just go a little bit forward and gently bending down, I just take my arm up and gently jab the kidney. Okay, going right on top of the kidneys, it's the adrenal glands. And if you want to work on both, you could also lean forward and gently jab the kidneys. And lead it down to the sacrum. Now the sacrum is otherwise a sacred bone, just below the lumbar region. It's a triangular bone. Five bones fused together. I'm coming down. Yeah, I'll just stand and, uh, yeah, I, you could do it seated or you could do it standing. Today I decided that most of you are standing, so, I mean sitting, so gently jabbing, leading it down to the sacrum and just easing it out. And the simplest thing for the spine is actually to, s to circle and move away. Any any back pain, if you're doing this in awareness, soft and gentle movements of m moving it away. And gradually make it bigger. So the most important thing is when there is pain, just move it away. But how you do it is most important. And if you, if you have a chronic pain, you don't want to do a five mile run. You want to attend to it. You want to gently move it away before you do anything strenuous. But don't let it stagnate. So if you sit with a back pain and a knee pain and swelling and say that I'm not going to move at all, you're immobilizing your muscles. 
Okay, you need to actually gently, gently move them away. Okay, so now coming back, coming to the knees. So placing your, we'll, we'll do one at a time. Placing your thumbs beside the patella, the kneecap. Just gently circling around it. Like I was saying, most people, you know, come to me with knee and back issues. And soft self-regulatory massages help anyone. Softly circling outwards. See the movements, my movements are going downwards. So this is the direction I'm moving. And the same thing on the other leg, the other knee. So when I was 12 years old, I, I played cricket. I don't know why. I don't like the game. Sorry, I'm sure most of you love cricket. Uh, with iron stumps. And in order not to get run out, I dived in and I got a huge injury. Uh, I grew up with Ayurveda and some inner sense, something told me about, uh, you know, uh, alternative ways of healing and stuff like that. So when they told me that I had to do surgery, I said, just tell me anything, I'll have the bitterest of medicines, but if I can avoid a knife on me, I'd be very happy. Uh, it passed, the swelling went off, there was a ligament rupture, but um, I managed to avoid surgery. I've been to nine Himalayan expeditions since then, and uh, somewhere the doctors also said that I would, uh, I would not be able to do yoga or anything. But, uh, you know, I, I dashed all that and I, I managed to do this. I'm just going to wind up with the feet in a few minutes. And Okay, so now you're just going to use your fingernails and circle. Nicely producing a nice electric feeling. This is bioelectricity. Okay, circling, 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 and lead it down. Again, circling around the knees and lead it down. For those of you who have difficulty even this, you can even keep it up, I mean, with the rest, and do this and lead it. Okay, so the whole idea is ideally in this position, you're able to lead the chi downwards. Any blockages, you're able to lead downwards. Okay, so thereafter, just two more points, and I want to wind up with this. Once again, taking about four fingers from the ankle bone, and at this point, you know, this is the yin linking vessel, your liver kidney channel, you're just going to ease this out, shake it, press it and shake it, and just lead it down. I'm going to show it on one side first, for want of time, and then we will learn this technique and do it at home. Then around the ankle bone, Tai Chi, this is called, also a press here, this depression here, and just circling around. Okay, and then we come to the arch of the foot. So this is something, if you have difficulty sleeping at night, this is what enables the pineal gl gland to produce hormones at night, okay? And ideally everyone, you should be in bed at least before 11. 12 to 3 is an ideal time when your pineal and pituitary glands are functioning. So if you want to be, you know, in harmony with your body and... Uh, I love these hormones to secrete. This, according to my Chinese teacher, 21 times. Okay, so before going to bed also you could do this any number of times. And lastly, the Yongchuan cavity. Okay, this is a kidney point. So you have this mound on the foot and to the center of it, just below this. This is the point that I was asking you to connect with the earth. Okay, so here. And according to the Chinese, the kidneys are the most vital organs. Okay, the, the Jing is stored in your kidneys or your essence. You're born 
with this. You want to. So the whole objective of Qigong is also firstly to conserve energy and to also also for longevity and you know to build up more qi to take you through life. Hopefully now I can bravely talk about death, you know. Hopefully you could walk to your grave, you know, in a good shape. <laughs> so you could do the other foot on your own. I'm aware of time and we had to start late today. So I'm going to wind up with this. Sorry for the calf muscles. Also, you have the center of the calf. Okay, so um, this here, there are more points. I'll talk to you more about it uh, another time and also a three mile run. Okay, the last thing I'll show them and we'll wind up with this. Okay, uh, just here, if you have your hand below the patella, where your middle finger is, you'll feel that point. Okay, that's, it's called a three mile run. So if you feel tired and you want, you know, to move about and to feel full of energy, just shake this up. So please do the same on your other leg. And uh, I have to wind up and I'm going back to Bangalore today. It's been a wonderful experience being here. Thank you very much. I thank the organizers. This has been a splendid three days for me. And all the participants, I'm, I'm taking back a lot of joy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cecily. Can I have Suman on stage, CEO of Thrive, to honor Cecily? She's been lovely waking up at 5.30 in the morning and doing this with us, trying to keep to time when we have been running late in other sessions. Thank you, Cecily, for adjusting. Thank you so much. Big round of applause for her, please.